Hi, I'm Jason, and I'm the product manager for Google Cloud Functions. Hello, I'm Steren. I'm the product manager for Google Cloud Run. We're here to talk to you about seven new features in both Cloud Functions and Cloud Run that will help you build modern apps with less complexity. Let's get started with Cloud Functions. Cloud Functions are the easiest way to extend Google Cloud products with custom code to meet your business needs. All you need to do is write a function and deploy. You won't need any DevOps experience, and you can connect over 125 Google Cloud and third-party services together. Here are some of the use cases where Cloud Functions are a great fit. Event-driven architectures help enrich your applications by leveraging existing solutions and products, some of which you may already be using. They also make your applications more robust by moving processing outside of the critical path. If you need to process objects once they're added to a cloud storage bucket or build a single purpose endpoint for a GitHub webhook, functions make your task easy. A lot of the data that your business collects may require some massaging before it's ready to be used or provide value. Cloud functions are great for these ETL pipelines and can transform input data into more useful information that can be stored in BigQuery or other databases. You can also use Cloud Functions to extend GCP products. BigQuery remote functions let you add custom logic to your SQL queries using any of the seven supported languages, including Python and Java. Our revolution of Cloud Functions was driven by feedback we received from customers. We've equipped Cloud Functions second gen with more powerful and efficient compute options, granular controls, and more event sources. More compute means more workloads that can use Cloud Functions that you can use Cloud Functions for. This is great when you need higher computational demand. And with more events, you can connect more Google Cloud and third-party services together, creating even more solutions than ever before. Finally, more control means you'll be able to better tune the performance and cost of your function. It's true that Cloud Functions scale to zero, but these added controls help you get the most bang for your buck while they're processing. Now, you'll have up to four times the amount of CPU and memory. There are two new configurations that you can choose from, 16 gigabytes of RAM with four vCPUs or 32 gigabytes of RAM with eight vCPUs. These new configurations enable new workloads that you might not have been able to choose Cloud Functions for in the past. We've also increased the maximum processing time for HTTP triggered functions by six times. Many of you requested more than the 10 minutes of processing time that we previously made available for your functions. With second gen, you now have up to a full hour of processing time for each function invocation. In addition to HTTP, responding to state changes for GCP products is a popular use case for Cloud Functions. When a state change or action occurs, an event is emitted that you can use to invoke your Cloud Function. These events can be an update to a database row, a PubSub event, or objects being added to a storage bucket. Cloud Functions now supports over 125 event sources. That's 10 times more than before, meaning you can programmatically extend virtually all GCP products with a simple Cloud Function. BigQuery is a very popular Google Cloud serverless data house warehouse product. You can now extend BigQuery's capabilities in seven languages using Cloud Functions. 
BigQuery remote functions support integrating with external APIs, including Google Cloud AI and ML APIs, as well as Vertex APIs. They're also great for data scientists who want to leverage languages like Python to analyze data. We know that many of our customers have workloads in specific Google Cloud regions. This often means that the compute options are limited to services also available in those regions. Google Cloud Functions are now available in 25 regions. This includes two new regions, Finland and Netherlands, with more regions coming this year. You may not realize, but Cloud Functions second gen is actually built on top of Cloud Run. This means that many of the capabilities of Cloud Run are available for second generation functions. Many of these capabilities are available natively in Cloud Functions API and UI, but I'm going to introduce two features that you can use by accessing through the Cloud Run UI and API, which we make easy to do. Instance concurrency lets you reuse the same function instance to handle multiple requests. Previously, every instance could only handle one request at a time. Instance concurrency is a really powerful feature that can reduce cold starts by sending requests to an already warmed instance, allowing you to help reduce the cost because you won't have to pay for dedicated CPU or memory per request. Just make sure your code is concurrency safe and that you set the appropriate concurrency value. Sometimes bugs make it into production and you need to quickly revert. Or you may want to slowly roll out a change to a small percentage of traffic and then look for anomalies. Every second gen function creates a new revision for each deployment. Now you can control which revision gets what percentage of traffic, enabling both of the scenarios I just mentioned. Easy rollbacks help you deploy with more confidence. That wraps up what's new in Cloud Functions. Over to you, Starin. Thanks, Jason. Let's dive into what's new with Cloud Run. But first, what's Cloud Run? Cloud Run allows you to deploy and scale applications fast and securely in a fully managed environment. It is simple and automated. There is no infrastructure to manage, no cluster to worry about, and it allows you to just go faster to be more productive. The first thing to know about Cloud Run is that it is available in all 34 Google Cloud regions. You can also expect Cloud Run to be present in future GCP regions. Cloud Run services automatically scale container instances based on incoming requests or events. Like Cloud Functions, you only pay when your containers process requests. With Cloud Run services, you can build public websites and APIs, potentially even leveraging a CDN like Cloud CDN. You can do server-side rendered pages, of course, but also REST or GraphQL APIs. You can stream with WebSockets. You can also build internal services, like an internal website or API, a private HTTP or gRPC microservice. And finally, you can do data processing, either to process queue messages or even to build event-driven architectures. We've recently launched Cloud Run Jobs. A job executes containers to completion on demand, up to 10,000 of them. And like for services, you only pay when these containers are running and you don't have to worry about any infrastructure. With jobs, you can now do more data processing on Cloud Run, like schedule scripts, asynchronous background processing, or batch data processing. All right, let's dive into those seven Cloud Run announcements. First, we are proud to announce a partnership with Datadog around observability. 
use the official Datadog in-container agent to send logs, traces, and metrics in real time to Datadog. Then we are introducing health checks. First, let's consider the life cycle of a container instance. There is the startup phase and there is the serving phase. With a custom startup probe, you can customize when your container instances are ready to receive traffic using a TCP, HTTP, or gRPC probe. This can be helpful to load data at startup or to wait for an async library to initialize. You might know that by default, Cloudrun instances are using a TCP startup probe. Requests are only sent to your containers when they are listening on a port. Well, that's something you can now customize. Then, we are also introducing liveness probes. A liveness probe allows you to tell Cloudrun if your container is healthy or not on a regular basis. And if it's not, it will be shut down and a new one will start. Use a liveness probe to restart your code if it has lost connection to a backing service, to recover from a corrupted local state, or simply to force a restart after a certain amount of time. The overall performance of your cloud on service might be impacted by the startup time of its container instances. While Cloud Run tries to route requests to already started instances, some requests might need to wait for an instance to start. That's what we call a cold start. This is why it's important to reduce the startup time of your containers. But we know it's not always possible. To help with that, we are introducing Startup CPU Boost. Without CPU Boost, the same amount of CPU is allocated during the startup and serving, serving phases of your container instances. With CPU Boost, the container instances receive twice the CPU at startup time. We have observed that this can cut in half the startup time of some workloads, for example, when using Java Spring Boot. Security of the software supply chain is top of mind today. This is why we have enriched the built-in security panel of the Cloud Run user interface with Software Delivery Shield, showing information relevant to the security of your containers. First, it will automatically compute your SALSA level. SALSA stands for Supply Chain Levels for Software Artifacts and defines level of assurance for your workloads. If you automatically build from your Git repository using Cloud Build, you will be level two, as Cloud Build captures the source provenance and signs artifacts by default. Then it displays vulnerabilities that were found in your deployed container images grouped by severity. And finally, it also captures more information about the build provenance of your container with a, link to, with a link to the cloud build logs and the exact Git commit used to build the container. And regarding security, we are adding three new security recommendations. Active Assist automatically scans the configuration of your cloud on services looking for recommendations to make. It will now suggest you to use Secret Manager if it detects that the environment variables might contain API keys or password. It will also recommend the use of the built-in service identity if it detects that you might be copying credentials inside your container image. Cloud Deploy is Google Cloud's fully managed continuous delivery solution. Well, Cloud Deploy now has direct support for Cloud Run, allowing you to manage the release of your container images between dev, staging, and production environments. And finally, Cloud Run integrations. 
You are probably aware that from within a Cloud Run Container instance, you can easily consume any Google Cloud API via a built-in authentication system. For example, to read and write data to Spanner or Firestore, all you need to do is to import their client libraries into your code. And Cloud Run handles the authentication for you using the per-service identity. However, some other services are harder to integrate with. For example, to use Cloud Memory Store Redis, you first need to create a Redis instance, of course, but then you have to know how to connect to it using a serverless VPC connector, and you need to know what's the instance IP address. We've replaced this with an experience that only requires a few clicks or one command. Let's take a look. From the Cloud Run user interface, open the new Integrations tab. Select Redis, pick a cache size, and click Create. That's all you need for your Cloud Run service to have access to a Redis cache. Another great example is setting up a custom domain via a global load balancer. It previously required dozens of steps to create the various load balancing resources. Well, we've replaced this with a streamlined experience. Go to Integrations, select Custom Domains via Google Cloud Load Balancing, enter your domain, and then let Cloud Run do all of the wiring for you. The last step is for you to update your DNS record, and you're done. Your Cloud Run service is now serving under a custom domain, leveraging a very robust global external HTTPS load balancer. OK, and these were seven new features for both Cloud Run and Cloud Functions. Learn more at the links on the screen, and feel free to reach out to us if you have any further questions. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.